It began long ago, on the battlefields of the Great War. Greetings, Zombie Slayers, Sleepy Jim here. Welcome to part one of my solo high round strategy guide for Origins on Black Ops 2 Zombies. There is a ton of stuff you want to do here right at the start, so I'm just going to go through this quickly here. You want to pick up the brain in the jar and a shovel from the starting area here. And then what I like to do is to hook up the generator here, the generator one, straight away. You can either train up these zombies. What I prefer to do is just knife them on round one here for an easy 10 points per uh, a Garth and Zombie. Let's call them a Garth and Zombies. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. Templars, whatever they are. Now at that point you get this prize coming out of the prize box over here. Double points. So just wait till the zombies have come in the windows. And then what you want to do is the old zombie tactic at round one of knifing a few times and then stabbing for the final kill to get as many points as you possibly can. And you kind of do need a lot of points in Origins to uh, get anywhere. Uh, if you've watched my strategy guides before, guys, and I have done strategy guides for every single Zombies map since World at War, Black Ops, now Black Ops 2, I like to get out of the starting area early. I'm a little bit weird like that. Um, but basically there, the last zombie always seems to give you a drop of some sort. We get another double points. Now you can look out the doors here through that little window. You can see which direction the box is either going to be one of those two directions. Now we have got the shovel. So basically here we're going to hit a few of these piles of dirt. And you can see we picked up a uh, the ballista I think it is. We're going to grab the record over there as well for the ice, uh, the ice stuff. We'll need that a bit later. And I'm going to hook up generated two here now normally I would have tried to uh, get up the robots foot there to get a part for the uh, the wind stuff but I was a little bit slow there and uh, it doesn't matter we'll come back and get that later now uh, basically we've turned on our second generator here generator number two and this is the location where the box is at as well so I'm just gonna hit that you do need some pretty decent weapons, uh, at least by about round 7 or 8 on this uh, on this map as well, because you will get those boss zombies coming at you that are pretty hard to kill and pretty dangerous as well. Now there is a part for the, uh, the zombie shield. Now guys, the very first target I have, the very first goal I have in this map is not to get Jug, it is actually to build the zombie shield and there's a couple of reasons for that that I'll explain. Jug is pretty much the second priority after that and uh, obviously you want to get, uh, if you don't get the box or you don't get a decent gun at this point you probably want to get the MP40 out of the uh, tank room there as well on the wall. We get a part for the staff, now talking about the staff parts guys, for the ice staff you need to dig the piles of dirt while it is snowing and you will have a chance of getting a part for the ice stuff. You can get all three parts for the ice stuff in a single round if you get super lucky, but the most I've ever got is two parts for the staff. Now at this point what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to head back through this way because you need to go uh, basically in both directions to get both parts for the shield that are located down here in the trenches. There is a spawn location right down here. You just have to be careful because they spawn like crazy out of that little hole there. And uh, there's another location over here and it happens to be right there this time. So we have both parts that are located down here in these trenches near the starting area. Just have to be careful not to get blown up there for the zombie shield. The third and final part for the zombie shield is actually located up towards where Jug is located. So we're going to have to get out of this area now. I like to get Semtexes just because they give you a little bit, bit more accuracy and direction in terms of where you place the grenades, mainly for when the boss zombie comes. And we're just going to check a few more of these poles of dirt, get some ammo off that one for the, uh, for the Mauser. And we're going to probably hook up generator here because we have a lot of ammo for this thing now 
I was going to try and uh, shoot the zombies a ton of times with this Mauser, which is very low powered, and uh, then knife to get some extra points, but we got an to kill, so that's almost as good. This uh, Mauser, by the way, obviously replaces the starting pistol that we've been used to in, in just about every single map. I think since World at War, we've had the Colt M1911, and uh, this thing does seem to be about the same power in terms of starting level, how many shots you can put into zombies before you kill them and stuff like that. Uh, so it is pretty equivalent. It's got a weird reload that kind of annoys me though. Like you can kind of stuff up the reload and uh, it only loads one bullet sometimes if you're not careful to wait for the full reload animation. Okay, so we've got 2,110 points at this stage. Not quite enough to go all the way out to No Man's Land, but enough to get in through uh, into this area here. And we're just going to hang out here and get another, I think we need about 120 points more at this, at this stage to get out into No Man's Land. Unfortunately, the snow stopped, so we can't get any more parts for the, uh, the ice stuff at this point. Now, I'll be talking about the ice stuff later, guys. I'm going to be showing you how to build each and every ice stuff. We're going to make a couple of them the ultimate versions and stuff like that, but I'm not going to make every single one the ultimate version just because there's no need to do that. It takes way too long, and it's not necessary. I'm only going to build the two very best ultimate staffs um, that will take you through the high rounds. I'm talking about like up to round 100, whatever you want to get to, basically, in terms of your skill and your level of... Um, non-boredom that's not even a that's not even a term but you know what i mean until you get bored or you get killed uh, these two stars will basically get you there okay so anyway we're now out in no man's land we have to be a little bit careful the robot not getting stood on by him and now i'm looking around here's another disc we'll need that for the lightning stuff now up here is where jug is located we also have claymores on the wall which are pretty useful actually in this map and uh, we're going to hook up the generator here, generator number four, so that we can eventually get Jug. You have to be a little bit careful of this one because you can get trapped if you're not aware. Um, I would probably recommend, if you're not comfortable training here, I'll probably recommend waiting till you have only one zombie left. But I did a little bit risky there. We get lucky. This is the first place I checked. Um, of the three locations where the other part for the zombie shield can spawn. So we can now build the zombie shield. Now the zombie shield, guys, is super, super useful in this. I recommend building it down here at the build table that's located nearest to Jug. I'll show you that a little bit later when we actually build it. We get some uh, blood money going. How cool is that drop, guys? I mean, it's only two or three hundred points, but still every little bit helps, I guess. We can actually get Jug here at round four, which is pretty cool. And the zombie shield, guys, uh, the zombie shield basically makes you impervious to hits from behind, but obviously it will wear out after a period of time. So we're going to plant it here, because when we come back here later in the high rounds, I'm actually going to be doing most of my training in this lo location, and that's going to allow me to just grab it back off that table when it gets destroyed, as it always inevitably does. Okay, we have an unusual sort of moment here with the three robots coming at once which doesn't happen very often, but it can be a little bit annoying when it does happen, especially if you've got a ton of zombies around you, or you don't have the golden helmet, which we'll get a bit later, and I'll talk about that at that point. Uh-oh, let's not get blown up here by those grenades. But what I'm looking for here, guys, is that foot with the glowing disc of light on it, because we want to get up into the robot. What you want to do is shoot that out, and then you will get basically teleported into the head of the robot. And this is where you locate one of the parts for the Staff of Wind. And each of the robots has one of the three parts. So we're going to collect all of those. This is probably one of the most annoying parts of getting the parts for, for the... Uh, for the, uh, the staffs in this game, this wind staff is a little bit annoying because you have to kind of wait for the robots. And one thing to remember is sometimes, like, you might think that at least one of those feet on the robot will have the disc that you can shoot out so you can get teleported up into it. But sometimes neither of the feet will have one. And sometimes you'll be waiting on one side and the foot will be on the other side that you're not located at. In some of the areas you can't run quick enough to get to the other side when that happens. So there is sometimes a little bit of waiting around trying to get into a specific robot to get the specific part for the, uh, for the Staff of Wind. 
Okay, so I'm trying to fill this chest here a little bit half-heartedly. You don't really need to complete this challenge in the map to uh, fill the chests up, but it's it's worth doing. I mean, you might as well do it. And uh, one thing to remember here, guys, if you have the zombie shield built, you can if you get swamped here and you don't have jug or whatever, and it's and you're getting a little bit trapped in this area, just whip out the zombie shield and do the old shield bash here in the early rounds. It's super effective for filling up those chests in solo, and uh, it is it is a good way, especially if you're stuck reloading or something like that, to uh, just belt the zombies with that and kill them to fill these chests up in the uh, really early rounds. Later on. It'll probably break in the really high rounds if you try and do that with a big group of zombies. It'll probably break straight away, so just keep that in mind. But really, really useful for the lower rounds when you're trying to fill those chests up. Now, uh, in case you didn't know, basically there are three, actually four challenges that uh, Treyarch put in this map that give you rewards, uh, which is pretty cool. And one of those is to fill up all four of the chests that are located here with zombie souls. It takes quite a few souls actually. And the trouble is if the zombies, if the uh, giant robot steps on the chest before it's been completely filled. Just have to be a little bit careful here. Then what happens is you have to restart and uh, go back through and kill the same amount of zombies again. Which kind of sucks. So you're best to wait until the, the uh, robot goes past and then start filling them up. That way you know you've got... Potentially the maximum amount of time, but the uh, there's no there's no real order to how the how the giant robots come through here. And here's another part that we'll pick up for the Maxis drone, just located there on that pathway, guys, where the tank goes. You'll see that a bit later. But there's no real like uh, there's no real timing or pattern to how the giant robots walk through here. They this one through the middle could come through like uh, you know next robot or something. Uh, whereas you could be waiting up the top there and it could take forever for that robot to uh, to actually come through. So it, there doesn't seem to be a pattern to that. It's just kind of luck and a random random chance of it happening. Okay, so still working on this chest. But basically at this point we're just going to build up enough points because we've got to get a couple of areas opened up. And there's that little glowing red plane. You want to shoot that down for a part for the fire stuff. The fire stuff we're going to build in this, but I'm not going to build the ultimate version of it. I'm just going to build the regular version to show you how to do that. It is the easiest and quickest stuff for you to actually build the regular version of it in the map. You usually get all the parts for the fire stuff before you get all the parts for any of the other staves. Or staves, whatever you want to call it in the correct English. I'm just waiting on that zombie blood there, and we'll grab that in a second. And try and fill up this chest. It's gone, so we have completed one chest here for that challenge. And basically, if you fill up the four chests, the reward you get is a melee weapon. Uh, I call it the Thunder Fist. People call it different things, but it basically is kind of like a Galvan Knuckle powered uh, melee where you can punch a whole group of zombies and uh, knock them down up until about round. I'm not sure exactly what round it is. It seems to be around about 14, I want to say, when it uh, is still a one-hit kill. Something around that. It's it's sort of equivalent to the Gal Knuckles, slightly better because you can uh, melee a whole bunch of zombies at once with that. Now, you want to be digging up as many of these piles of dirt as you can find and as you come across throughout the game, guys, because... When you hit a certain number, something like 40 or 50, you will unlock a golden shovel. And after that, after about another 20 that you dig up, you will unlock the golden helmet. And we'll talk about those a bit more when we get to those. But they are really, really useful and important for, uh, for playing this. So, talking about what this strategy guide is. If you guys haven't watched my strategy guides before for zombies, I show you every step of the way... Uh, until round 30, uh, and sometimes a little bit beyond that as well, on every single Zombies map. I'll have a playlist link in the description, guys, to this video, because uh, I have playlists for high round strategies from round 1 to round 30 for every single Zombies map ever, including World at War, original Black Ops Zombies maps, and Black Ops 2 as well. So if you guys want to check that out, if you haven't already, please do so. Uh, you'll find some pretty uh, pretty useful strategies that will get you to really high rounds in all those maps, uh, including both versions of uh, the uh, original maps as well, both Black Ops and World at War versions. So 
yeah, go check that out if you haven't already. But the reason I show every single step of the way right through from round one to round 30 is some people put up guides and then all they show is five minutes at like round 40 or 50 or something impressive like that. But the hardest part is actually setting yourself up to get there, guys. Now, I've picked up the black disc, guys, which can be located there just as you come up the stairs and a couple of other areas around this um, excavation area. You also want to grab that gramophone, which is always located in this area, and place it on the desk. What that does is it opens up this secret stairway down into the area below the excavation, which is where you need to access to build the, uh, the staffs in, uh, in the game. Now, the after that is opened up, what you want to do is you want to grab that gramophone back. I'll explain that later. But we're looking for the final part now for the Maxis drone. It wasn't in the other spot we checked, so I'm going to check down here, and here it is right here on this crate. So we can actually go build the Maxis drone now. The Maxis drone has, has actually a really cool kind of Easter egg style thing that you can do with it, and that is to get a free pack-a-punched... LMG, which is pretty awesome, guys. It's the equivalent of something like... Uh, I was thinking of the RPK, but that's more of a, a Black Ops zombies weapon. For those of you that are more familiar with Black Ops 2, it's it's more like um, uh, one of the... You know, one of the LMGs that you have in zombies anyway. It's kind of an old-school looking one, and it is pretty awesome, guys. But I'll show you how to get this free pack of punch gun... Uh, very, very soon, but we're going to build the Maxis drone here first. And basically what that is, <laughs> it's like Maxis's brain in a jar, and he flies around in a little, in a little drone that uh, basically shoots the zombies for you. But it also picks up drops, guys, which is actually super useful for if you're on the tank. Because when you're on the tank and you're riding around the map in that, you're shooting zombies that are running behind you. And uh, the problem with that is they can actually drop... Uh, drops like max ammos and stuff, and if you're on the tank, you can't pick those up. But if you throw out a Maxis drone, he will actually go pick that up for you, which is pretty cool. Anyway, guys, I'll show you the free pack punch weapon in the next episode. Remember to rate and comment for now. It is Slippy Jim out. Thanks for watching. Mr. Monkey,